Hello, welcome to the Humans in Geelong Online Expo 2021. And I'd like to introduce Craig Morley, who is a life member of the Geelong Field Naturalists. Thanks very much, Jackie. It's a real thrill to be involved in this exciting project. And I would wish to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which I sit today to give this presentation. And the, uh, for much of the time when I'm out looking at birds and nature, it's the land of the Wadawurrung and I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. I've been fascinated by nature, especially birds from a very young age. There are many, uh, many things, many aspects I could talk about today, but I've chosen to talk about a project that the Geelong Field Naturalists Club did using a lot of data about the bird observations in the Geelong region from 2013 through to 2016. And I present it to you as the Geelong Bird Report editor for the Geelong Field Naturalists Club on behalf of each and every person who contributed their records of birds in the Geelong region. So who was involved? There were over 600 observers over four years. And what did they do? Well, they got out and they observed birds. But just as importantly, if not more importantly, they actually recorded their observations into, uh, into one of two citizen science databases, uh, which use mobile phone apps or can use mobile phone apps. Uh, eBird, and you can also put that the records in on a website there, or as was the case with a number of um, members of the Geelong Field Naturalist Club, they put in their records or their highlight records on our club website. So where did we look in the Geelong region, as uh, indicated by this map inside the uh, yellow line? Uh, down to the coast from Port Campbell to Point Lonsdale and inside uh, Port Phillip up to Avalon. So where did we look? What sorts of habitats? Well, there's a cross section here I'll go through. Riverine uh, woodlands, eucalypt woodlands, the rainy wet forests of the Otway Ranges, Shelter belts along rural roadsides. The wonderful lower Barwon wetlands. Here we see the Barwon River flowing out of Lake Connawarri and up towards the top of this image, there's Reedy Lake and off to the right, that is Cryo Bay, the expanse of water you can see to the top right. Of course, we also look at sandy and rocky beaches and of course, the wonderful rock platform at Point Lonsdale Lighthouse figured prominently for a number of us with our records. We also looked at what you might loosely term urban wetlands. Here in the foreground are the two wetlands of McLeod's waterholes at Drysdale and in the background there is Lake Bourne. We also observed birds in urban parklands and some people even uh, recorded birds in their gardens. What were the results? Well, we ended up with an astonishing 306,000 observations on 320 bird species. What did we learn? We came up with seasonal maps, seasonal charts, and we divided them so that we could more clearly see and indicate what was happening with the birds. We divided them into six seasons over the 12 months. And that also shows the patterns and the changes more clearly. We also added interesting behavior, including breeding records. So another facet of all of this was that while we're about it, I thought it would be really exciting. Another aspect we've never done before on the birds of Geelong, is to consider which are the ones that are most numerous or most common or most frequently observed. So that what we ended up with 
was a percentage, a table of the highest percentages of species that were recorded on the most lists submitted. And number one, perhaps unsurprisingly, I'm sure I can hear many of you guessing already, it is Parwin the magpie, which came out number one and was on 43.6% of um, completed surveys that were submitted during these four years of the of the program. Red wattle bird was also there, down to um, house sparrow at number 10, just under 25%. And these are the, the maps that we ended up with in this case for the magpie. So you could, and I should add that we decided on different colours, red for the hot hotness of December, January, orange, brown for autumn, so to speak, and then blue a bit cooler and then green for the new growth in spring. So that it was, it's intuitive that the maps go around clockwise. And as you can see from that, and this with the, um, the monthly uh, frequency or seasonal frequency, um, magpies are everywhere all the time, which is no great surprise, but it's nice to have the those data that actually tell you that. So what about other species which are showing differences in time and space? Some of you will recognise the gorgeous flame robin, which some of us look out for coming onto the plains in, uh, in autumn and into winter. So that rather than going through the six maps, which you are free to do, if you later on download the free PDF from our website, I thought we'd look at a number of these species just with um, summer and the stark contrast to winter. So as you can see, um, the flame robin spread out into these more open areas in the cooler months. And the seasonal reporting frequency um, backs up what we would uh, have as a bit of a hunch anyway that we that when they come out onto the the plains we uh, are more likely to see them another interesting little bird of our region that might get under the radar for a number of people but some of us really like to watch out for this species the yellow-faced honey eater coming through the uh, suburbs of Geelong and other areas um, as they migrate um, out of the colder, wetter, higher altitude areas of the Otway Ranges. And they do that through um, April and May and they're away for a, a few months in from these higher altitude, colder areas in June, July. And there's the seasonal frequency for that species. Another one that is an endearing species to many of us, um, the gang gang cockatoo. This is the female feeding on crab apple seeds in a, in a suburban garden. And there's the male in the same tree also feeding on crab apple seeds. So what happens with this species? Well, here it is in December, January in the higher um, altitude areas of the hotways and then in the depths of winter there are still some records but you can see that it's not the it's not the same distribution there are more of them as I said the bigger the dot the greater the number of records in the uh, urban area around Geelong and here again it backs up what we've already got a bit of a hunch about, but it's nice to have the uh, the whole the cold hard data to really be able to uh, back up what we're suspecting. Now we really move on to the uh, the big time migrants. We're looking now at a species that is with us for a number of months of the year, especially during December and January. This is Latham snipe, which quite literally completely leaves Australia and certainly our region of the world and they fly north and breed 
on the northern island of Japan, namely Hokkaido. Here's another trans-equatorial migrant. This is the red-necked stint, a tiny bird, barely 30 grams, but it, but it will uh, fly to the Arctic tundra in Siberia to breed, and then it flies all the way back to then feed voraciously in our uh, uh, wetlands. This is a little bit different in that it is not a complete migrant in that the younger birds in their first year tend to stay behind. So we still do get winter records of this species. Here's another species that some of you may be aware of when you look uh, really carefully at the different birds around Geelong. This is the purple crowned lorikeet. And I thought it might be insightful to go through the six seasons because this is a species that we often think of as being nomadic following the flowering uh, blossoms. And indeed, that is the, uh, is strongly suggested from these data that, that are shown up in our maps. So if you can uh, hold on, we'll go through six maps for this species. February, March, April, May, June, July, again, staying well away from this, these colder places, higher altitude colder places, August, September, October, November, and December, January again. A few other interesting little sidelights. This is an Australasian bush lark. We had a record of an observation of one of these birds perched on a fence post at Baliang, north of the Yuyangs. And it was singing for all it was worth with mimicry of no less than 13 other bird species. And I'll leave you to fossick into the free downloadable PDF to find out what those 13 species were. Pink-eared ducks are a wonderfully endearing species of duck in our part of the world, but they are highly mobile and they certainly do move around. Uh, included in our observations in this document are records of them flying, literally flying over the city of Geelong. You can hear them. They have a very characteristic chortling call and they were flying, particularly in 2013, over Geelong, and that they were only ever doing it on moonless nights or nights of heavy overcast that was blotting out the moonlight. But why I'm mentioning them specifically here is that in 2016, they, again, with these data that we were able to produce, um, or to display, I should say, more accurately, uh, we were able to show that they left the Geelong region, uh, presumably in response to rain further north, and they went into northwest New, um, northwest New South Wales, southwest Queensland to breed. So that here they are, they're bobbling along present, and then all of a sudden they just literally vanish. So I would commend the Geelong Bird Report of 2013-2016 to anybody who's interested in the birds of the Geelong region, anyone who enjoys the birds of the Geelong region, which is probably lots of people, and please record the birds and let's keep learning together and finding out more about them. And if you are interested, please go to our website, follow this link, and you will be down, able to download a free PDF of this document. Also, if you're interested in finding out more about the club, follow these links to our website, our Facebook page. If you have a specific question or it's not answered for you on the, uh, the website, please use the info at email. I would sincerely like to thank all the observers, the clever people who put together and maintain the databases that we used. The Geelong Field Naturalist Club website observations page and all the other observations 
that go on to the Geelong Field Naturalist Club website. Uh, Richard Alcorn, who did a wonderful job with the maps and graphs. The people who provided the front cover photographs, uh, Jen Carr and Graham Possingham. Uh, my friends, David and Scott, who provided some extra photos. And also my friend, John, who took me up for a fly in his Cessna on a couple of occasions. And there are, there's the legend for the, the species that were on the first few slides. And there's the uh, links again. And just finally, thank you to everyone. Thank you very much, Craig. We'll put all those links in the information um, that goes up.